Welcome to this comprehensive guide to IELTS listening. We'll cover everything from easy tips and quick wins to fundamental strategies that can help you improve your score. It's Asia. Let's get started. Let me begin by giving a quick overview of the IELTS listening must knows. IELTS listening is the same for both academic and general training students. It lasts for 30 minutes. If you take the exam on paper, you'll be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet at the end. In IELTS on computer, you select your answers directly, so you get two minutes extra at the end. Each test consists of 40 questions split into four parts. Questions generally get harder as you progress, though some questions in parts 2 or 3 may be harder than those in part 4. In terms of scores, you're awarded one point for each correct answer. 30 correct answers get you to band 7, 35 to band 8, and 40 to that magic band 9. Remember that you hear each recording only once and there are no pauses between different parts of the listening test. The tips and strategies we're gonna discuss next require your understanding of different types of tasks. So let me show you what those are. In parts one and two, you'll hear about everyday topics. Part one is a conversation between two people, like a quarter hotel or shop. While part two is a monologue or a talk by one person, for example, a tour guide talking about a town or a speech about employee training. Parts three and four are dedicated to more academic topics. In part three, you usually hear two students discussing an assignment. And the last part is a university lecture. In terms of the types of tasks, there are only four. In parts 1 and 4, you're required to fill in the blanks. The task reads, write no more than one word and or a number. I've checked recent tests and it seems that write two or three words questions are reserved for IELTS reading. In IELTS listening, that's one word. You may see a table, a flowchart or some notes. Multiple choice questions require choosing the correct answer, A, B, C. There may be three options and one answer, or five options and two answers. You always get these questions in parts two or three. The next type is a map. You are required to label each part by choosing from a list of options. Sometimes, instead of a map, you get a set of options in the box, which you match to a list of questions below. These are matching information questions. And in your test, you get either a map or a set of matching information questions, just one of the two. Now, let's talk about the best tips that can help you answer more questions and some quick wins. I know you like those. One of the difficulties in IELTS listening is time. There is just not enough of it and it may feel like you have to read, listen and write all at the same time. But it doesn't have to be this way. IELTS listening becomes a bit easier if you can carefully read questions before listening to the recording. In the test, you are given about 30 seconds to do that. While it's enough for part one and maybe two, in parts three and four, there is hardly enough time to finish scanning the questions. So here is a solution that helped me get Ben 9 years ago and it still works today. At the end of each section, you are given 30 seconds to review your answers. Together with instructions telling you to do so, that's 45 seconds plus a time with instructions for the next section. You could get 1 minute 45 seconds to read your questions instead of just 30 seconds. And that's enough to read all the questions and highlight keywords to help you find the right option quickly. Use the time for instructions 
and room vision to read questions coming next. And if you're wondering if you are allowed to go to the next section before you hear the instructions to do so, the answer is yes. Once you open the test questions, you can go to any page you like. In a computer-based IELTS, you just need to click on the next question to go to the next section. And don't forget to do that because new questions won't open automatically. As for reviewing your answers, there is a bit of time for that at the end of the test. Even if you read all the questions when the recording starts playing, there are so many elements in the task. Where to look? Knowing this can solve this problem. All IELTS listening questions come in order. If we have a look at the map again, you'll hear about the coffee room, then the warehouse, staff canteen, and so on. When you are preparing, study the map and try to memorize the objects on the map. There is no need to spend too much time on the questions because you know in which order they come. And remember that you start at the entrance, in our case, in the reception. Similarly, in a matching information exercise, you see a box with options named information and below the questions from 15 to 20. Follow the questions. First, you hear number 15, fresh food commercial manager, then agronomist, and so on. While preparing, carefully read and try to memorize the options in the box. The third element of the strategy is to concentrate on the right things. Remember that information is never repeated in IELTS listening. Each option is only discussed once. It's either correct or incorrect. The answer will not change. Once you've found your answer, move on to the next question. If you're not sure what the answer is, don't try to figure it out straight away. Mark the question to review and go to the next question. If you miss one answer, move on to the next question and try to find those answers you missed at the end of the test. Otherwise, it's easy to get distracted and miss several answers in a row. Ouch. If you are taking a paper-based exam, underline keywords and cross out incorrect answers. If you take IELTS on computer, I'm afraid you can't do that because highlighting takes too much time. The next question is, can you write your answers in capital letters? So let's have a look at the official IDP recommendation. In IELTS on paper, write all your reading and listening answers in capitals so it's clear for the examiner. However, in computer-delivered IELTS, handwriting is not an issue, obviously, so you should try to write all words using upper and lower case. Basically, what they're saying is, you should try to use correct upper and lowercase letters if you're taking your exam on computer instead of capitalizing all your answers. At the moment, this is just a recommendation, so you can write all your answers in capitals, but you should keep an eye in case this changes in the future. In IELTS writing, though, you must use correct capitalization. Next, don't leave questions unanswered make your best guess. You don't lose points for incorrect answers. Spelling counts. You can use British or American spelling. Keep an eye on two questions, your question and the next. If you accidentally miss one answer, you want to quickly switch to the next question. Well, it's not all about tips and easy wins, though. Let's discuss how you should practice to achieve real results. You might have heard practice, practice, practice. And practice is a must, but it's more important to practice smartly than to do a lot of tests. First of all, use the official practice tests. 
You know, it's pretty difficult to create a test paper that has the same level of difficulty as exam papers. Non-official tests may be easier, harder, confusing, or simply different. That's not good. The best tests are Cambridge practice tests. And you may use any recent book, let's say from number 15 and up. There are several official practice tests available online for free. These tests are linked in my study plan, which you can download in the description. Those can give you a good understanding of the test, but they're not exactly like the real tests and they haven't been updated in years. This is particularly true when it comes to the computer practice test, which is slightly different. So use it to learn the platform, but not the test format. After you do a full IELTS listening test from Cambridge practice, don't just count the number of answers and close the book. An equally important part comes next. At the end of the book, you can find audio scripts of all the recordings. Check each question you answered incorrectly and try to understand why you got it wrong. Was it the spelling, a certain type of task, an accent, or you fell for one of the typical IELTS listening traps when an incorrect answer is deliberately mentioned? Identify and work on your weaknesses. For example, if you notice that you couldn't understand some things while listening to the recording, but the transcript was very clear, this is a sign that your listening skills need a boost. Let's discuss three ways to improve your listening skills. The first way requires using a practice test. You may use an older book, it really doesn't matter. There are two steps. Take one recording, find its transcript at the end of the book and start listening. Don't look at the transcript when everything is clear, but as soon as you notice something you couldn't quite understand, pause the recording, find this phrase or sentence in the transcript and figure out what it means. Then listen to it again, trying to hear each word. Once you do, continue listening until you find the next difficult place and so on. This exercise helps your brain link words and phrases you know with how they are pronounced, thus improving your listening skills. Step two is to listen to the same recording without the use of transcript. Hopefully, you'll be able to understand everything this time around. The second way to improve your listening skills is to learn different accents. In your test, you may hear British, American, Canadian or Australian accent. I've never heard any regional accents, for example, Scottish or Irish, which are quite specific, so don't worry about them. I think it's most important to train your ears to understand British and American accents. In IELTS listening, pronunciation is unnaturally clear. So if you get used to listening to more authentic English speech, understanding IELTS recordings will be a piece of cake. One of the best things you can do is start listening to audiobooks. You can listen to a book while commuting or doing some domestic chores. Listening is a passive skill, so you can work on it even while doing something else. And if you're not yet on Audible, you can get any book as part of your free trial. I'll leave a link to claim your book in the description. Just remember that if you don't want to start paying for your subscription, you must cancel within one month and you can still keep the book. Podcasts and news are great too. You may find it more difficult to watch movies where pronunciation is often really relaxed and unclear, but don't despair. Movies and some YouTube videos require a different level of listening skills than IELTS. You get there with time. For now, concentrate on audiobooks, podcasts, and news. Now, let's compare IELTS on computer and paper. I took both. 
A definite advantage of taking it on computer is that you are guaranteed to have earphones. While some test centers running exams on paper still use loudspeakers and it's just not as clear. If in doubt, give your center a call to find out what they use. When you work on paper, it's easy to cross out incorrect answers or highlight keywords. On computer, you have to memorize everything because there is not enough time to use the highlight feature. You can still mark questions for review, though. In both tests, you can take notes on paper. In IELTS on computer, you get a sheet with instructions for each part of the test, which you can use to make notes. Another advantage of the exam on paper is the 10-minute extra time at the end to transfer your answers. Honestly, transferring answers takes just a couple of minutes, so you can spend more time checking your answers or trying to figure out answers you missed from what you can remember. On computer, you get only two minutes, which is enough to review a couple of questions, perhaps filling the blanks to check your spelling, but not more. The good thing with IELTS on computer is that you don't need to think about putting a letter in the correct box or checking what answer format is required. However, you should feel comfortable using a computer and typing answers to fill in the black questions while listening. You can learn how to use the platform by taking the IDP practice test. The platform is exactly the same, but the test is not. There are around 40 questions to start. There are pauses between sections and so on. Just use it to learn functions and how to answer different types of questions. Yes, strategies for tackling different types of questions are really important. Let's talk about them. If you learn how each of the four types of tasks is constructed, you'll be able to concentrate on things that matter and hopefully answer more questions. I asked you to vote for the most complex type of tasks in IELTS listening. And we have a clear winner, multiple choice questions. And I absolutely agree with you. Those are tough. Actually, it's worth preparing for each type of task. In those that seem easier, you want to make sure you get the top marks so you have more leeway when it comes to the most challenging tasks. I have lessons about each part which are all linked in my free IELTS study plan along with all the practice tests linked in the description. As for multiple choice questions, there are two types of them. I've analyzed all the recent tests to find patterns and check which approach works best. And you can learn what I've discovered and try some practice tasks with me in this video here. And thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye!